Crystal Hoyt, Caribbean Broadcasting Corporation, Barbados. Uh, is CARICOM prepared to do more than send troops and humanitarian aid? Uh, given the dire situation in Haiti, uh, is there any consideration to give visa-free access to Haitians to other Caribbean countries within CARICOM? Well, well I would say the very specific issue you raised was not discussed. Um, I think we, we have to understand the situation in, in, in Haiti, and uh, we are, have to understand what it means to be impactful. Um, you know, in our discussions, the foreign minister made the point, for example, that Haiti can grow its own food. It has the water. It has the land. It has a security challenge. So giving uh, Haitians visa-free access to CARICOM countries isn't going to solve the security challenge. Right? So, so what we are seeking to do is to ensure that we continue to support the Transitional Council, uh, that we continue to uh, raise the advocacy for the fact uh, that the multinational uh, security force which has to assist with stabilizing the security uh, situation in Haiti requires significant resourcing. Uh, if those things happen, it uh, makes it easier for the security situation to be stabilized. It makes it easier for the displaced persons uh, to, to go back to their respective homes, villages. It makes it easier for the existing humanitarian aid which is coming to Haiti, but oftentimes may have difficulty being distributed because of the security situation. Uh, to reach the persons who need it. Uh, and then it makes it easier for Haitians to actually begin to grow their, their own food. So we, we have to appreciate our own capacity, capabilities, uh, and try to ensure that uh, the strategies that we support are strategies that will ultimately be impactful uh, uh, and more long-lasting to stabilizing the situation in Haiti. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Our next question from the room, sir. Good afternoon, Berthony McDermott, Our News, Bahamas. Mr. Chairman, you spoke about climate change. Um, so my first question is, what will be the um, position from CARICOM as we head into COP29, or what will be the messaging, considering this won't be the first time that we would have gone to an international stage to make a plea, but as we have heard, not much has been done. There hasn't been much tangible response. So what will be the messaging and what will be done to ensure that we get some kind of a response? You also mentioned, as it relates to barrel, um, the extent of damage. Are you able to give an estimated price tag on how much um, CARICOM estimates it will cost for the recovery or rebuilding effort? And my last question um, is if um, the delegation from Haiti, if someone would be able to just give a first-hand account of the current situation on the ground right now in Haiti. We heard from some of the other leaders, but if you could just give a first town account as to where things are and how things look right now on the ground in Haiti. Thank you. All right, I'll, I'll ask Haiti to take uh, your question and then I'll answer your, two, your, your first two questions. Maintenant, il faut dire que la situation a évolué positivement, je dirais, dans la mesure où les forces de sécurité nationale, la police nationale et l'armée d'Haïti euh alongside the Haitian military and the international force have been deploying uh, joint operations in the metropolitan area. Et uh, les premiers les premières opérations déployées et effectuées par la police nationale accompagnée des troupes kenyanes ont permis de reprendre l'hôpital général le principal centre hospitalier de la capitale et de consolider à l'heure actuelle tout, euh, tout le périmètre de cet hôpital. So in a context where around 70% of the hospital uh, services, healthcare services are in operational, the joint efforts of the national police, the military, and the Kenyan forces have allowed us to regain certain lost territories, including around the um, 
General Hospital, which is one of the main healthcare uh, facilities in the metropolitan area, and we were able not to only to regain that territory, but to safeguard it till now. La vie commence à reprendre dans les rues de la capitale et dans le reste du pays, dans le nord comme dans le sud. La vie, la vie a, a, a repris quasiment totalement et environ 80 000 étudiants en neuvième année fondamentale ont subi les examens officiels réussis la semaine dernière. There are signs that life is regaining its normal course in many parts of the, the Port-au-Prince area and other uh, major cities of Haiti. What we see is a sign of life retaking its normal course and the econo economic situation improving. Uh, a clear sign of that progress was the fact that 80,000 students in the metropolitan area were able to successfully uh, attend to their end of year exams. Uh, their official exams, and that, that's a sign of progress and of, uh, of clear direction towards a better security situation, even if the steps are very small. Parallèlement, le Conseil présidentiel de transition et le gouvernement mettent en place les organes de la transition pour permettre sur le plan institutionnel, nous avançons vers les élections à la fin de l'année prochaine. Meanwhile, the Transitional uh, Council, Presidential Council, is taking all of the institutional steps needed for us to uh, securely advance towards the electoral process. All right. Uh, thank you. And in, in relation to the, the, the damage assessment, uh, the damage assessment is still ongoing. Uh, today is the 30th of July, so it's only 29 days. Um, and in many instances, the, the initial, what you would have had was initial damage assessment or rapid damage assessment. Um, and, and oftentimes these estimates are rarely based on, on loss and damage. Uh, it, it doesn't include economic loss, business uh, disruption, and the actual cost of rebuilding. Um, so I can, I can tell you, for example, that in the, in the context of Grenada, uh, we would have received very, very rough preliminary estimates of damage to the housing sector, even when we had not concluded the assessment in Caracu. And easily, this was placing it uh, in the region of uh, over 400 million EC dollars. In the agricultural sector, uh, again, uh, millions of dollars. So th the truth is, uh, between agriculture uh, and, and housing alone, we expect the, the loss and damage to be uh, somewhere in the region of 600 million. Um, and that is very uh, preliminary estimates. Um, there's been significant damage to the marine environment and the ecosystem in, in, in Karaku. The mangroves have all been uh, badly destroyed. Uh, all of this needs to happen. Uh, we are not yet in the damage and assessment that I've, I'm referring to here. We are not talking about the water system. We are not talking about the uh, electrical system, system, the transmission and distribution grid, which was completely destroyed. Um, so, you know, the fishing sector, the fishermen, uh, significant loss uh, in the aqua and marine culture, significant Lost. So uh, I don't want to simply throw figures out for throwing figures out sick, but our anticipation is that um, uh, based on preliminary estimates, we expect as much as uh, one third of Grenada's GDP uh, to be uh, the, the potential loss and damage. And to put that in context, we're talking about a billion dollars. Right. On the issue of COP, um, you know, one of the things... Uh, we discussed was the, the issue of uh, how do we get the funding to treat with the rebuilding effort, to treat with the restoration and the relief effort. Uh, so we anticipate that our approach to COP29 would be different. Our approach would really be about the specific funding of the loss and damage and the rebuilding efforts uh, that our member states have, have, have suffered from. Um, because it's not just the loss and the damage and the rebuilding, but it's the adaptation and the, the mitigation. And this is, is critical because this may be a cataclysmic event, but on an ongoing basis, uh, small island developing states are on the front line of, of this issue. Prime Minister Gonzalez talked about the fact that uh, in the case of St. Vincent, he's had to deal with 10, 11 natural disasters, including volcanic eruptions. Um, so we, we, that is the approach we intend to take uh, when we go into COP29. We have a prime ministerial subcommittee led by Prime Minister Motley. 
uh, and, and prime ministers from the islands that have been impacted, in, as well as um, President Ali, uh, that has uh, already met and uh, begun crafting our responses uh, to how we treat with uh, our approach to seeking the necessary financing to uh, deal with the restoration and rebuilding of uh, our islands as a result of uh, Hurricane Beryl and the discussions between the uh, Canadian Minister of International Development and CARICOM, which uh, Dr. Ali spoke about, is part and parcel of that process. It's a multifaceted approach because we're talking significant financing um, and we need to get support from everyone, anyone, frankly, to help us with this challenge. 